about uh, your tour. We are spending about 213 million dollars. Yeah, that's about how, how many billions? A lot of billions of 20 billion to basically do that inner container depot. And we are working together with Kenya Revenue Authority so that whereas the clearing comes here, if it's to do with customs, some of the work will be done in Nairobi. Yeah? But what you, what you need to do is to make sure that we do not have containers lying around here waiting to be transported to Nairobi. And so that ICD will help. But also the issue about uh, Naivasha. <coughs> Naiv <coughs> Excuse me. Naivasha, we are building what we call special economic zone. There will be no container depot there. It's about doing an SEZ to be able to take account of all the cheap power coming from the geothermal investments in Naivasha. That's why we first tracked this section from Nairobi to Naivasha. That needs to be understood. You can talk about the ICD in Nairobi, about clearing and doing those things, but in terms of Naivasha, it is bigger to support the kind of industries which are coming there as a result of the special economic zone. Just a, a question to the MD. I'm looking at um, the fact that um, all these improvements have been done at the port. Um, what should the, the users of the port expect in terms of uh, cargo dwell time, um, issues to do with uh, more jobs for the young people? And of course, talking from an operations point of view, have you procured more equipment, um, for example, the Gandhi trains? And uh, if you can just give us an update on that. Okay. Uh, in terms of, let me start backwards, in terms of equipment, yes, we have procured and we are continuing to procure. R right now here, we have two ship-to-shore gantry cranes and ten rubber-tired gantry cranes. We are in the process of procuring an additional four. This is for both this container terminal and also phase two. Because um, ship-to-shore cranes take a minimum of 18 months to, to manufacture. So we have to do the procurements ahead of uh, completion. Then, um, and in terms of efficiencies, yes, with the capacity expansion, definitely our users, the port users, should expect to see more cargo fluidity. And with the coming of the SGR, it makes it even better because there's no dwell time. As soon as the cargo lands in port, then it goes onto the rail and it is immediately transported into the hinterland. Currently, like I said before, there's a bit of... Um, lead time in the uh, collection of containers that overstay yeah. between three three days and nine days for transit countries but that is going to be a thing of the past and uh, see us, do, you, yeah. do you think um, this will have an impact on the cost of doing business moving forward and secondly mm. um, of course uh, the port of mombasa is also anticipating to be linked to lapses mm. um, if you could also comment mm -hmm. on that yeah, I think that's a very um, appropriate question to ask um, because, you see, we keep on talking about bring down the cost of doing business in this country. Uh, to the businessman in Nairobi waiting for, for his uh, goods to be imported, what matters most, in addition to the cost, is the time. As you recall now, if you use the, tr the trucks, despite all the problems we had, in terms of road networks, they take about uh, sometimes uh, two days to get to Nairobi. Now, upon these containers coming here, loaded to the, to the yard, which is just next door, they will take eight hours to Nairobi. So, obviously, the cost comes down uh, by half in terms of time. Then, in terms of uh, the actual cost, we have done the analysis, and in fact, it will be much cheaper for the goods to be transported by rail compared to uh, the way they are being done now. So yes, indeed, there will be a very big advantage. Your second question was? Uh, my second question was uh, the lapset part. Oh, the lapset. Yeah. Um, let me say this, and this is important. You develop transport corridors uh, in parallel of each other. For example, we have this northern corridor, which starts in Mombasa, goes to Nairobi, goes to Kisumu, goes to Malaba. That's what we call the northern corridor. But then we have the, now the lapset corridor. If you do not connect the two, you do not maximize the benefits. So what, what we are doing is to say, look, lapset corridor is there, which is also at the, if you like, management 
of Kenya Post Authority because it's actually a baby of Kenya Post Authority. But we have to link the two. To do so, you may have heard, I think it was two or three weeks ago, when the president was in Witu, and he announced, and this is factual, that we shall do a real rink from Lamu to Miritini. That design is done. We've done the costings. And I think that will be critically important in the future. Because if, say, the capacity of Mobasa becomes overstretched, then you can bring goods to Lamu, which is now we are doing three, three baths, and then transport some of those goods to Miritini uh, through this link, which already we are going to do for SGR. I believe the cost is worth it. It will be about plus or minus $2 billion. But that will make sure that the two corridors are properly functioning together. It will add value to us as a country. Because you see, for Northern Corridor, it serves about 17 counties. Lapset serves about 18 counties, but different counties. So you have to do this link in Mobasa. And even Nairobi, that's why we shall do this link of a road from Nairobi going through Nanyuki, Isiolo, and then that will be the link with Lapset. That way, we shall have a very integrated transport system in this country. Very efficient, very value adding. And uh, maybe to JMD, um, of course, um, the court has been having the challenge of uh, this declaration of goods uh, coming in. Um, KRA has also tried to step up its game in terms of uh, having a new system in place. And um, moving forward, with the uh, with a growing number of cargo capacity. Um, this also exposes the port management to the exposure that could come along with that. Um, perhaps what sort of measures do you have in place moving forward to tackle issues of uh, contraband goods coming into the country? And um, so far, how would you assess the performance of uh, the port in terms of handling this? The problem of this declaration is something that we are fighting together with KRA. So it's an interagency initiative. We as a port cannot do it alone, and they as um, Kenya Revenue Authority cannot do it alone. So we have an interagency uh, team that is tasked with ensuring that uh, misdeclaration becomes a thing of the past. And to this end, both KRA and KPA are investing in systems which are going to enable port users pre- do their pre-advice for, um, for delivery. So even before the vessels arrive, they will have been pre-clearance. And that is what we are working towards. Such that when the vessels arrive, then the containers or whatever cargo, it could be containers, it could be conventional cargo, is cleared immediately it arrives. Without those systems, then even the fact that SGR is there will not, will not work. So we must make sure we do pre-clearance. Cargo comes in. It's already been pre-cleared, it goes out immediately. So we are working together with, uh, with the other inter-agencies. Yeah? Precisely. So um, I suggest from here, because we need to see the linkage now between the port of Mobasa and SGR. We go to the marshalling yards, which is, if you like, the genesis, the starting point of the SGR. And then from there, we shall see the other investments, like the Mobasa West Station. Okay, let's move on.